Budget smartphones. Those couple words used to mean a certain thing to us. If you weren't a big gamer or a picture taker and just wanted a phone that was cheap and could do a few things here and there, go get a budget phone, right? Well, during the past year or so, this has slowly changed. Budget phones are getting really, really good. Good enough to game, to take good pictures, and overall just getting to be very powerful. The Moto G has been the king of budget smartphones for a while, but with the second generation Blue Life One X just announced, there might be a new king in town. Hello everybody, it's Crystal Laura, and let's take a closer look at this with the 2015 Moto G versus the 2015 Blue Life One X. Both of these phones feel great to hold for two reasons. The first being their smaller footprint. The Moto G is the smaller of the two with a smaller 5 inch screen versus the Life One X's 5.2 inch screen. However, in terms of thinness, the Moto G is a lot thicker with its rounded back. That's kind of the theme with the entire Moto G's design. Along with this rounded back, all four corners have been rounded off a lot, whereas the Life One X's rounded corners are more traditionally sharp. All this being said, both phones are very light and are the perfect size for one-handed use, and it will comfortably fit in most pockets. The second part of a great feel in the hand is due to the materials they wear on the back. The 2015 Moto G's back plate is made of a nice rubbery material, which will definitely allow for your hand to get a good grip onto the phone. And on top of that, we also have these little grooves throughout it to create a very cool textured feel. The Moto G is going to feel very secure in your hand, and even more so with that nice Motorola dimple that acts as a nice resting point for your finger. Now with the 2015 Blue Life One X, we have an all around more sleeker design with what looks to be a leathery plastic pattern that's coated in a smooth paint layer. The pattern feels quite soft and has little indentations and grooves all around like real leather would, which should also make you feel like you're not going to drop the phone even with it being a little taller than the Moto G. While the Moto G is made of plastic all around, the Blue Life One X makes things interesting with its high quality aluminum frame with a sandblasted matte finish. It really adds some extra splash to the phone's design, which is something most budget smartphones do not provide. Both backs are removable, although not for exchanging batteries. Instead, this is where users can access the SIM card trays and microSD card slots. However, while the One X can support up to a 64 gig card, the Moto G caps at 32. But there is one feature this removable back on the Moto G has that cannot be found in the One X. You see those little plastic pieces here and here? They're there for sealing up the card trays because this phone is IPX7 certified water resistant. So this phone can be immersed in up to a meter of water for 30 minutes and still be fine, which is very impressive. Unfortunately, you'll have to leave the Blue Life One X behind when enjoying some water activities. The Moto G is still a great feeling phone and looks very nice as well, but if you appreciate a sleeker look, the Blue Life One X will probably be what you prefer. When it comes down to displays on budget smartphones, don't expect anything to make your head turn. With a 5 inch IPS screen on the Moto G and a large 5.2 inch IPS screen on the Blue Life One X, you'll have some really good viewing experiences. Both displays look really nice and seem to be equally bright, good enough to be able to see in sunlight without much of a problem. In terms of colors, the One X's display seems to be more on the cooler side with really nice and true whites, while the Moto G is more warm, making the whites seem more towards a reddish pinkish side. If that's not enough for you, the One X also has a display setting that you can tinker with called Mirror Vision, which is an engine that allows for interactive tuning with real-time quality feedback. This includes preset picture modes like Standard, which is what we were just comparing with the Moto G, a vivid mode that ever so slightly boosts colors, and really, I know this is up to preference, but we really love that extra kick in colors on this display. It looks gorgeous. There's also a user mode where you can unlock basic color tuning settings like contrast, saturation, picture brightness, sharpness, and color temperature. Also, a dynamic contrast setting can be turned on and off if you prefer a less hazed image. The Blue Life One X is still not done beating up on the Moto G's display. This 2015 Moto G still is stuck at 720p, which is a little disappointing as you can clearly see the pixels making for a fuzzier image than the One X's 1080p resolution. After saying all this, the Moto G's display isn't bad, but it could definitely use a bump up to 1080p and then it would be great. But when comparing it to the One X's display, there's no competition. Really, the display on the One X here doesn't need to be compared to any other phone to show just how great of a screen it is. So let's get down to the reason why these phones are so cheap and considered to be budget phones. You don't get a crazy amount of power packed inside these two phones, but you seem to get just enough. The Blue Life One X packs a MediaTek processor, which is clocked at 1.3 GHz, while the Moto G has a Snapdragon 410 processor, which is only a 1.4 GHz quad-core. It's still a great processor, but with the Moto G's base model only having 1 GB of RAM and the One X having 2 GB of RAM, blue smartphones seem to take the upper hand and you see this when it comes to the benchmarks. With our base model Moto G, Geekbench 3 shows the Life One X achieving a much better single and multi-core score, and also a better ranking on Intuitu's performance app. 
In normal use of loading apps and switching between them, you'll clearly find the One X does a much better and faster job. Apps will always load faster on the One X and not refresh as much as a Moto G. It's pretty disappointing that the Moto G's base model starts at 1 gig of RAM while still being more expensive than the One X's base model with 2 gigs. But we'll take a closer look at pricing towards the end. We have an interesting comparison when it comes to GPU. We have the more familiar Adreno 306 on the Moto G, while the Blue Life One X has a Mali T720 GPU. And when running some benchmark tests with GFX Bench, when looking at the low level tests, which is all the Moto G had to offer, we get some mixed results. Some show the One X falling a bit short, while others show it outperforming by a lot. But for a real world test, we tried playing Asphalt 8. The Moto G actually seems to load the game just as fast or a couple seconds faster than the One X. Both do play great, but expect a couple more frame drops when playing on the Blue Life One X. It's still very playable, but with the Moto G pushing less pixels, that could be why you'll see smoother playback. When listening to YouTube videos with the speakers on these two phones, we've got complete opposites. The Moto G has a pretty decently sized front facing speaker found on the bottom of the display, whereas the One X has a smaller speaker found on the bottom of its backing. Both speakers sound good, but the Moto G definitely has a better of the quality. Even with the Moto G being the much thicker phone, Blue managed to fit a bigger battery into the taller One X. The Life One X has a 2,900 mAh battery, while the Moto G has a 2,470 mAh battery. You're going to get very impressive battery life out of each phone, and in no way was I able to ever kill the batteries on either phone in a day. The only modification I make to extend my phone's battery is turning off Bluetooth and Wi-Fi scanning. Other than that, all my emails are set to push, all account data is set to sync, and with moderate use, both phones should last you at least 4.5 to 5 hours of screen on time. With the smaller and lower resolution 720p found on the Moto G, you may gain an extra 30 minutes of screen on time over the One X, but when it comes down to it, it's hard to kill these in a day. If you're wondering which phone is better at charging times, well, there's no fast charging or anything found here. So if you're a heavy power user, with these budget phones, you may have to charge during the day and wait it out. Both phones offer great and pretty similar software experiences. They're running Android Lollipop 5.1, and both companies didn't really change too much, creating a really close to stock Android experience. There hasn't been any reskins in the menus or pull down sections, and instead, both companies just sprinkled a few extra features on top of the already good looking and functional operating system. On the Moto G, there aren't many features, but every feature on here users love, like Moto Display that lights up your screen when you receive a notification, with fun and easy ways to preview the message and jump into it, and you have some gestures too, like twist of your hand to launch a camera app, or chop to launch a flashlight. On the Blue Life One X, most features will be found within Settings, and there are a lot more. Within Smart Awake, you can turn on finger gestures when the screen is off, like drawing an M to launch your music player, C to launch a camera, and O to launch a flashlight. A double tap to wake feature is also here, and there's some more features like double tap of the home key will turn off the display, a pocket mode that uses the proximity sensor to save battery, flip to silence calls or alarms, and finally scheduled power on and off modes. So you can tell your phone to turn off and on during certain parts of the day, which is pretty interesting. If you love a stock Android experience, you'll be happy with both phones. It's just up to you to pick the features you prefer. Now in the past, Motorola was very timely with updates, but recently Motorola users are still stuck waiting for their phones to update to Android Marshmallow, which could be a while. Blue, on the other hand, has said they are making an effort for timely software updates and are making it a priority. So even with the Blue Life One X just announced, we will probably lean a little more towards Blue rolling out a Marshmallow update first. Both cameras here offer 13 megapixel rear facing sensors with flash and autofocus as well as 5 megapixel front facing cameras. With these phones being so cheap, you won't find any optical image stabilization here. Both camera interfaces are very simple, which usually we like because that means it's easy to use. But on the Moto G, perhaps it's too simple and actually makes it harder to use. You can't tap to focus, instead you need to drag to focus and tap to snap a picture. And your settings are hidden and can only be accessed when you pull out this little slider. It makes for a very confusing experience, while on the Blue Life One X's interface, most of your go-to options and settings are already displayed on the screen, with tons of extra features that the Moto G doesn't have tucked under the setting menu. Here we have things like beauty modes, night modes, sport modes, dual view, and even a pro mode with manual controls. Although as you'll soon see, the Moto G still seems to take the better pictures, even without all these extra modes. Both cameras capture a decent amount of details and colors, however the Moto G always seems to have a bit more sharpness to the image, making for a more pleasing photo. Colors always seem to be much better on the Moto G, and they really come alive and make for a beautiful picture. The blue phone still manages to create a nice picture, but with its darker image and more subdued colors, most users will probably prefer the Moto G. HDR also seems to do a better job on the Moto G, and not only does it bring out the shadows and brings down the overexposed parts of images like skies, but it's pretty fast. 
The Blue Life One X has an HDR mode too, but there's no auto mode to it, so you'll have to go into the settings menu and click it to switch it on. It does make for a brighter image, but it does take quite a while with the progress bar showing up after clicking the shutter button, and then you get a message urging not to move the phone as it takes the pictures. So most of the time, you'll end up with a blurry picture. Still though, in these low light photos, both phones do a really good job, but the One X is always gonna need HDR mode on and a steady hand to create viewable images. The Moto G manages a brighter picture even without HDR, but with HDR, it adds some better colors. There is a night mode found on the One X, but once again, you'll end up creating very soft looking images with not much detail due to the lack of a steady hand. The front facing 5 megapixel cameras are more closely matched, but still the Moto G manages to create the clearer and sharper image. Although the One X tends to have the better exposed picture with better colors, but it's very minimal. HD video is available on each phone, although by default the Blue Life One X is set to 720p, so make sure you change that within the camera settings. The color is a main difference you'll see between the two. The Moto G is much warmer than the One X, but this does come down to preference. The color temperature on the One X seems to be less warm, but still the colors are pretty lacking compared to the Moto G. You'll see more saturated colors with the Moto G even with this warmer tint, and you'll also get a lot more detail out of the Moto G and overall better video quality, although the One X does do a better job at focusing onto things. The Moto G is capable of shooting slow-mo video at 120 frames per second with a lower 720p resolution, where the One X has no video features. For such a low price point, these phones make for great cameras. If you're buying either one of these phones, the camera probably isn't going to be the main priority for you, so you should be happy with either camera. But the Moto G does have a slight edge. Really, if you're in the market for a budget smartphone, the winner usually comes down to the cheaper of the devices. In this case, the Blue Life One X takes the cake with a much lower price point at only $149. Now the Moto G starts at $179, but you're only going to get 1 gig at the base model. So to get the same storage and configuration as the Blue Life One X, you'll have to dish out some extra cash at $219, which is $70 more overall. Blue also goes even further to help this One X's value, as right out of the box, they include a nice pair of in-ear buds, a screen protector, and even a really nice case that is actually a back cover. So once you remove the leathery backing, snap this one on, and it'll fold over the front of the phone, protecting it and activating a black and white clock with your notifications and even music controls. The Blue Life One X really is an amazing value, and it triumphs the Moto G in almost every aspect. When it comes to budget smartphones, there is a new king in town. Well, that is the end of this comparison video. Thanks for watching, and make sure you comment below and let me know which of these two do you prefer. Also check out these other cool videos on the side here, and click up there for our Android Authority app. And last but certainly not least, head on over to androidauthority.com for the full in-depth comparison, because we are your source for all things Android.